Hi everyone and welcome to Lundy's monthly financial and property update. This month we are in September. I really am not sure where the rest of 2020 went, but I think a lot of you will probably uh, join me in celebrating uh, its coming to an end. In today's video, as always, we're going to discuss the current evolving situation, its impact on the property market. We're going to touch on some of the extensions around the mortgage repayment holidays and the impact of the reduction on job seeker and job keeper payments, which are all happening from this month on words in the economy and so we'll have an impact on a lot of you I'm sure out there. With me today as always we have David Hyman, he's our co-founder and CEO here at Lundy, so welcome Dave. Thanks Sarah, great to be here again. It's great to have you back. Um, can't believe we've got through yet another month. I know for the Melburnians out there you guys will be counting down not just the days but the hours and we're really hopeful that you see some of your restrictions start rolling back soon now your numbers are coming, coming back down so fingers crossed there. Um, but Dave, let's jump right in. Last month we spoke about how the current market, housing market has shown some resilience despite the changes. And I know a lot of analysts um, were of a, of a different opinion earlier this year, but seems to be quite resilient um, with the changes. How's the situation changed in your mind and um, since then? And could you share some insights into that for us? Yeah, sure. So the main changes that have really sort of played out over the last kind of four to eight weeks have been the changes as they relate to Melbourne. Um, so before I dive into that, maybe just to kind of recap, uh, if we go back to the start of the COVID period, there was some analysts and economists um, forecasting pretty catastrophic falls in property prices, not just in Australia, but around the world. Um, I think some of the doomsday scenarios we saw were sort of 20, 30% drop, certainly in the double digits. When we reflect on what's actually happened um, last month, uh, as in for the month of July, sorry, not August, um, we saw about a 0.6 fall and CoreLogic's data just came out on August. It was about a 0.4% drop across all capital cities. Um, when you look at the underlying data, the majority of that drop was driven by Melbourne, who saw a 1.2% fall in prices. Um, now, when we consider what's actually happening down there, and I know you sort of made the comment there about our friends down in Melbourne, um, and trust me, we're all thinking of you can't imagine how difficult it must be, in particular as you know the rest of the country is kind of picking up spring and the beautiful weather we've started to see, in particular in Sydney, the last few weeks. Um, but if we look at what's actually happening at the uh, kind of at the coalface in Melbourne, you've got a city in lockdown where severe restriction on movement, you've got things like virtual open for inspections, virtual auctions, uh, but it's actually been quite resilient given those given that backdrop. So we've seen Auction clearance rates in the 60s last week, we dropped down to just below 50%. Again, albeit on lower volume. So we haven't been seeing sort of the six, seven, 800 properties a week selling. It's been more like the one to 200 property range, but it has been resilient for those properties that have been selling. And while a 1.2% price drop um, on a monthly basis um, is you know relatively large compared to the rest of the country, um, it's certainly not the double digit pricing decreases that some some people were sort of predicting. In previous updates, we've talked about a bunch of the things that have been driving that. So um, I think, you know, Aussies are certainly spending much more time at home, not just Aussies, but people around the world. And um, that's driving people to think about where they're living. And some people are moving out to the, the beaches or the country or the suburbs. Um, and then on the other side, we've seen historically low interest rates, um, which is making it all that much more affordable to get into a property um, or to upgrade your property. So. Yeah, all in all, pretty resilient market, and um, we keep a watching brief on things as um, as hopefully Melbourne comes out of their lockdown in the coming weeks and months. Absolutely, fingers crossed. And um, certainly, those figures are much less bleak than we were expecting. So, some good news amidst um, some difficult times that we're facing. Um, so, thanks for that. You mentioned that the government stimulus packages and mortgage repayment holidays are keeping the economy afloat, but the reduction in the job keeper and job seeker uh, payments take effect at the end of September. So this month that we're in, what do you think this will mean for those affected and what could the potential impacts be on a slightly wider scale? Yeah, so the best way to answer that really is to kind of look back at how both the government and the finance sector has dealt with the crisis from the get-go. So if we kind of go all the way back to March, we had the ABA and the banks, as well as Treasury and the government, come out really, really quickly with a couple of key stimulus measures. So you talked about JobKeeper and JobSeeker, um, but there's also the, the mortgage repayment holidays. And if we think about how those things kind of come together, a JobKeeper and JobSeeker is about keeping both companies uh, employing people and, and, and able to sort of have the cash flow coming in to, to keep people in jobs. 
for those that are out looking for jobs, the elevated payments that were there, and albeit those will be stepping down at the end of September, as you mentioned. Um, there's there's broad based support um, for those to continue. When we look at the other side of the coin, which is the mortgage repayment holidays, this was really about the banks providing support to their customers um, who were in distress. And so they might be on JobKeeper or JobSeeker or their small business might have closed down or they might have been stood down for an extended period of time. And it's really there to make sure that um, we don't have a whole bunch of people in default on their mortgage and, and, and ultimately in a period where there's kind of forced sales, et cetera. So I think the good news is there's been continued signaling that that support will continue. And obviously the mortgage repayment holidays have been extended to 2021 in particular. And when we break down the data, I think what we've started to see over the last few months is really a, um, if you think again, going back to March, um, there was a broad, across the whole economy, there was a lot of uncertainty. There was, you know, people weren't sure how long this was going to last for. And, and while we're still you know, in the thick of it, um, there were certain industries that, it was unsure as to whether they were going to be sort of more affected than others. And what we've seen happen over the last few months is a number of those industries come back online and particular for things like retail um, and even to a certain degree, um, local and domestic tourism um, and hospitality businesses that were sort of particularly hard hit at the beginning of the pandemic. So I think that, you know, the upshot of all of this is that um, various sectors across the market are starting to recover. Um, and there are some that are still in, you know, in stress, you know, if you're a, a Qantas pilot, um, you're probably not flying an aeroplane at the moment, but we've we've generally seen a number of subsectors of the economy um, come back online. And the good news is, and really the upshot of it all is, the government, uh, treasury, the banks, um, they're all sort of extending sort of extended support. And we're seeing a, a, a number of um, the people that were kind of going into those mortgage repayment holidays starting to come off. And those that are still on there, um, a, a large subsector are, are starting to make part payments. Um, which is all the steps that we need to take. Again, this recovery is not going to happen overnight, but these are all the steps we need to take to to slowly bring these things back online. And I think the you know the conclusion out of all of that is I don't think we're going to see thousands of properties coming on the market as for sales. Um, we're not going to see fire sales. I think the, the low interest rates combined with the mortgage holidays um, and the extension of JobKeeper and JobSeeker uh, mean that this is really a soft landing. Um, you know, subject to how you know things play out over the next few months with both suppression and a vaccine. Yeah, absolutely. So people out there are obviously worried still. Um, I know we've talked a little bit about it's going to be a slightly softer landing for many than first anticipated. But for those out there who are still worried about the economy and kind of the proverbial financial cliff that people keep talking about, what would you say to those um, homeowners who are still concerned in the current situation? How best can they secure their their financial position? So I think um, this, and this should be really consistent with the advice we've given historically, mortgage rates have never been lower. If you haven't reviewed your loan in the last 12 or 18 months, and even if you took out your loan in 2019, uh, you could be saving tens of thousands of dollars on your mortgage. So going back, the banks all came out with very, very competitive fixed rate offers at the start of the crisis. And those, those offers are all still in market. There's still even a bunch of cashback offers to really entice people to, to, to take that jump today. And it's never been easier to refinance. What COVID really did was it accelerated a lot of the digital adoption for a number of the banks. There's a whole bunch of different processes that used to be manual and offline and time consuming that, that can now happen in a purely online context. So it's never been easier and it's never been more important to do so. So we strongly recommend if you haven't looked at it for 12 months or, or longer, or if your rate starts with a three, that you should absolutely do something today, whether that's looking at another lender or working with your existing bank to move you onto one of the new rates. Um, and certainly, you know, lender or home loan specialist can help with all of that. Absolutely. And I don't know about you, but um, I think I mentioned at the beginning that time is just flying by. So um, I know the other day I noticed it had been a year since um, I even I checked and I it just blew my mind that it had been a year. So time is going really quickly, guys. So just make sure that even if you did get your your mortgage last year, you know, you could be um, there could be a real opportunity for you to review it now. A common misconception as well is that you should only be doing this if you're under stress. Um, we've actually seen a whole bunch of customer anecdotes that where we've got people that, are, you know, they've been in the fortunate position where their jobs have continued and maybe they're working from home a little bit more than they were before, but their income still kept rolling in the door every month. And we're seeing a lot of those people um, take out the new offers and just keep their repayments where they were before. And what that really means is that they're able to pay down their loan many, many years ahead of where they would before. So you don't have to be in mortgage stress. You don't have to have lost your job to be 
to be looking at these things, um, now's really the time to do it no matter what situation you're in. Yeah, that's really great advice. Amazing. Imagine losing a few years off of that, that mortgage. Thanks so much, Dave. Uh, yet again, just some amazing insights um, and really, really crucial that we're bringing a more positive point of view out there as well for, for how the market is going. Again, as always, if you have any comments or topics that you would like us to discuss in these sessions, then make sure you add that to the comments below. And if you are experiencing any financial difficulty and you're wanting to know a little bit more information about how you might reduce some of your mortgage stress, we do have a whole bunch of content on our YouTube channel for you. There's one here covering uh, mortgage repayment, holidays and refinancing. So make sure you check that out. Otherwise, we hope you stay safe. Uh, Melbourneites and Victorians, we hope that next time we see you, you've got a little bit more freedom and your numbers are even more reduced. Um, but thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.